Hi everybody. Uh, don't get me laser disc collection today. Uh, anybody who knows what a laser disc is will probably find it fascinating. Mind you, even if you don't, you'll probably you think, what the hell's a laser disc? As you can see, it's a 12 inch giant CD. Uh, really conveniently, the exact same size as a vinyl album. So if you've got a vinyl album collection and a laser disc collection, they'll uh, go together. But yeah, they kind of always like, catches the light, kind of cool. And if you need an emergency mirror, I guess just whip up your laser disc collection. That's a laser disc. Uh, go through some of the reasons why I like laser disc and why I kind of think they're cool and why we're checking out if you're a film fan or a fan of technology or whatever. But one really cool thing about Laserdisc was, and this is a perfect example of it, was when this film was new, which is about nearly 20 years ago now, I had this on Laserdisc a good six or seven months before the film came out to the cinema. I remember being in a pet shop uh, up uh, uptown a few miles away and looking across at the ABC and thinking, wow, I wish Masters I've already got that Laserdisc. I thought it like, really cool, like I'd come from the future or something. But if that wasn't good enough, it's in widescreen, uh, it's got a making of documentary on there, behind the scenes interviews with cast and director, and an audio commentary with the director and writer. Not bad for something that's knocking off for 20 years old, so that's really cool. And then another great thing about Laserdisc, especially compared to like Freeview and things like that, is the things like the sound, and the sound on this film was amazing, like when the film first starts in, the talent comes on and they're doing a, um, a cover of uh, Dead or Alive Spin Me Round and it's like this really cool talent and, the, and the, coming through an old CRT TV and the uncompressed sound on the laser disc was really awesome so that's like another great thing and I think I even had this a few months before it came out so was, that was really good this was always an interesting laser disc not only was it the very first alien film I ever saw coming a bit late to the party I remember when I went in the video store and they got like two new laser discs that had come out that day. One of them was Red Corner, the Richard Gere film, and the other one was this. And for some reason I was really close to getting the Richard Gere film and I said to the guy behind the camera, like, I've only got enough because they're like 40 pound at the time, quite expensive. And I said like, I've only got enough money for one, which one should I get? And he's like, oh it's got being in Resurrection, so I, I got that and it's like, it was really cool. Talk about sound though, this is an incredible disc for the sound. The opening uh, uh, scene with like Michael Parks in the convenience store and when George Clooney come in and uh, Quincy Tarantino come in for Rob the Place and it all blows up, spoilers. Uh, it sounded so cool coming on off Laserdisc, it was really, really awesome. And this is nothing about Laserdisc as well though, that it's really funny that, because um, like, no, people don't want it. And I, I literally got this for like, I was just unopened and it literally goes for like about Ten pence or something, and it's like you know that you know it's like the drawings on it look really cool and everything. And then even things like this, like I'm not particularly a huge fan of this movie. But look how glorious the artwork is. It opens up. It's got all information about the film. Loads of great photographs and everything. So you have it on the back. What's in there? Two discs. It's really awesome. Not one of my favourite films here in the Mouth of Madness. Still to this day though, what's great about this movie, because it still has not come out on the um, DVD or Blu-ray in the UK, so uh, if I want to watch it on a format that's not going to uh, wear out over time, this is the uh, one to go. Again, talking about good deals though. I went to a convention and they were doing an auction for stuff. And this was really cool. I got like the Indiana Jones trilogy before, it was actually before Crystal Skull was even released. And it's again though, because it's from the time. Uh, which one is it? Uh, Raiders, it says here. Coming soon, summer of 84, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I and mean, can you believe that this this video disc came out before Temple of Doom was even released? And actually, that kind of leads me on to this point. Uh, I always think of Blaze Disc as being really futuristic and like, you know, video on a disc and all this kind of stuff. Well, I'm a big fan of the airport movies. And I don't know how many times I've watched Airport 1977, and it's good for all kinds of reasons. It's got Tom Sullivan in it, who's the uh, site impact consultant for Daredevil. It's got, you know, it, it's got Christopher Lee in it and people like that. I, but I've, like I say, I don't know how many times I've watched this film. I watched it about 10 years ago, and somebody's using a laser disc player in it. If you look on the trivia on IMDb, it says um, it was like a prototype laser disc player. So that laser disc player's from about 1976, 77. I was three when that film came out. Laserdiscs actually were invented. 
And another great thing about Laserdisc was that when you were like quarantined in the shops and everything, you get great booklets like this that like tell you what Laserdisc uh, cake were coming out and everything. One thing that always makes me laugh, well not makes me laugh, but I just think it's cool, is this picture of Jonathan Ross that's in here. He like showed his laser disc collection off watching uh, this morning on his big huge, that's similar to the TV I had as well. But the great thing is I'll have to tweet that picture to Jonathan Ross because that was in his uh, when he's doing cool stuff and a few people like Jackie Chan and that. Uh, so that was um, that was always a good thing about laser discs. And another th uh, thing we did mention about laser discs as well is um, some of the best arcade machines ever made had laser discs at the heart of the machine, like Dragon's Lair was one. And anybody who knows me knows I love it, and she's put film Firefox. And they actually made an arcade machine of about Firefox. And if that one's amazing enough, that was actually built in and around a laser disc. Uh, and, and talk about the sound as well, I think someone, um, anybody that sort of went pubs in the like uh, mid 90s probably saw laser discs um, on karaoke. They used them for karaoke for years and years in uh, pubs and clubs. Probably might even still do. Uh, uh, Scream 2, this was a great laser disc trap at the time. Don't think it came out very much, you know, I don't think it came out like six months before the film or anything, but just having this at the time was like, oh my god, anybody there, you know, it's like one of those things, it was so cool that anybody who came, you know, to the house, like, you know, it's like living in the future, it's one of the first people to have a widescreen TV from radio rentals, and uh, I got this, um, got this laser disc player, it was just like, oh my god, anybody was like, have you done this, have you done this? Uh, Dot through. Uh, all kind of, kind of good thing. Complete waste of license fee though, right? Investing in a format that nobody had. Kind of nice uh, chaps here. Um, pay for them. Kind of cool. uh, great thing about laser disc though as well was. Um, uh, great thing about laser disc though was uh, you get films like the like really weird films like this, like Henry Portrait for Serial Kill, which was like that was banned in the UK for quite a bit. So it was kind of cool when this sort of came out. It always kind of makes me laugh as well. There's somebody to stick like an 18 sticker on there, think something like or something as if it was legit and stuff. But yeah, another great thing about laser disc though as well was um, the fact that you could go and cash converters and like you know pick up like sudden death on laser disc. And again, yeah, it's a film that kind of like you know Die Hard and an ice hockey stick in you. But you know, not I wouldn't say it's the new favourite film ever made. But it was like you know you've got that great artwork and got the chapter list on the back and you know just looks like especially like your know, films that you really love like say Hitting the Man. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like incredible. Uh, Wayne's World. I mean, probably one of the reasons I've seen it like a million times. I've had it on like a million formats, VHS, laser disc, but. Lens World's always a great film to have. And this was, uh, again, doesn't sound like a good thing, but the great thing about Laserdisc was you could get a film like this where if the, you know, the UK market didn't have much faith in Laserdisc, they would just dump a 4 3 sort of version of the Laserdisc uh, like onto DVD, but the sound always sounded cool. I talk about things in retrospect that you know, probably weren't that good you know, at the time, but uh, they would have to change sides and sometimes they would pick the greatest scenes ever for. Uh, to change the size of the disc. One of the best examples was um, in The Wedding Singer. It's one part where John Lovett says it. He's losing his mind and I'm reaping all the benefits. And this curtain closes, just as the curtain closes, the disc changes size. I always remember a guy in the shop saying that um, you know, it never took that long to change size, but it wasn't quick enough to go and get a beer at the fridge, which is kind of true. But yeah, uh, uh, there's a quick look at laser disc collection, I'm sure. Um, any other little bits I forgot to mention I'll put on the site uh, and I'll, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Thanks for checking it out. See you later.